I'm Robbie Ferguson from Positive E Solutions, and in this short video, I want to teach you two important things. The first is that I'm going to help you understand what two-factor authentication is, why it's critical and why it's not as complicated as it sounds. And the second thing that I want to teach you is how to enable it on your Zimbra account. Let's get started. See this guy? That's Dan. Dan's password is Milo1994, after his childhood friend and the year Dan was born. You went to school with Dan, so if I came up to you and said, Hey, I'm Dan, you'll no doubt say, uh, no you're not. So then I tell you, yes, my password is Milo1994, which you may know to be correct, but you still don't believe me. See, there's just one thing that I didn't think of. You know what Dan looks like, and you know that I am not him. Well, when you sign into your Zimbra account, you have a username and a password. The username is just your email address, so that is not a protective factor. Anyone can get that. But up until now, you've simply used a password to access your account. So anyone, absolutely anyone who knows that password, basically says, I'm Dan, my password is Milo1994, can access your account. Two-factor authentication sounds complicated, uh, even a little bit intimidating, until you realize it's simply a way for the Zimbra server to recognize you, to say, yes, that's the correct password, but I know Dan, and you are not him. Well, how do we do that? Well, we use something that you already own, your smartphone. Although anyone can obtain your username and password, while not impossible, it's significantly less likely that they'll also have physical access to your phone. With two-factor authentication enabled, once you enter your password to log into Zimbra, then you'll be prompted to obtain and enter a code from your phone. Your phone becomes the second factor in your authentication process, making this, you guessed it, two-factor authentication. See, it's not as complicated as it sounds. Let's set it up. First, if you normally access your Zimbra account using Microsoft Outlook, close Outlook now. The first steps of our configuration will take place in your web browser, so open your browser, such as Chrome or Firefox. When logging into your Zimbra account, as a customer of Positive eSolutions, you'll be going to zimbra.positiveesolutions.ca. Never attempt to log into your Zimbra account on a different domain. Doing so might be a phishing scam, which is one of the ways hackers get their hands on your password. Always observe the address bar to be sure. Once logged into your Zimbra account, click on the Preferences tab at the top. Now on the left, there is a menu item called Accounts, which is where you'll configure advanced settings for your Zimbra account. Click on that. Now in the Primary Account section, you'll see Account Security, which has a link that says Set up Two-Step Authentication. In Zimbra, two-factor authentication is called two-step authentication. Sometimes you'll see 2FA or even MFA, which stands for multi-factor authentication. Generally, these are all synonymous with one another, so let's go ahead and click on Setup Two-Step Authentication. Now we're presented with a setup dialog. Read through the important introduction and then click Begin Setup. Now Zimbra wants you to confirm your password, so enter it here and click Next. It's time to install the app Zimbra will use to confirm you are you. Pull out your smartphone and open your App Store. That's Play Store if you're on Android, or App Store on iPhone. Once in your respective App Store, do a search for Google Authenticator and install that app. Now, as you can see, I already have it installed. We're going to need that in a sec. With the Google Authenticator app installed, let's go back to our computer where Zimbra is waiting for us to proceed and click Next. Now we're presented with this big long setup key. We need to type that verbatim into our Google Authenticator app. 
open Google Authenticator, which we just installed on your phone, and click the plus button in the bottom right of the app. Of the presented options, choose Enter a Setup Key. Start by giving your Zimbra account a friendly name. You might call it simply Zimbra or Work Email. This is just for your reference. In the Your Key field, start typing that big long key from the Zimbra setup dialog into your phone. Don't worry, you only need to do this once and no, it's not case sensitive. Leave the type of key set to time based and press Add. Now you'll see your Zimbra account followed by a short string of numbers and what looks like a countdown clock. That countdown is how long that key is good for. It changes continually. Click Next on the Zimbra dialog on your computer and wait until there is plenty of time on your countdown in Google Authenticator just to make sure that you don't run out of time as you're entering it. When ready, type the code and press Next. Success! You now have two-factor authentication enabled on Zimbra. Click Finish to close the setup wizard. One final but optional step. The question may come to mind, well, what if I lose my phone or it gets broken? And for such a case, we offer single-use recovery codes. So click on View to display them and then print them and store them somewhere safe. That could be your desk drawer or the glove compartment of your car. If your phone ever cannot be used to log into your account, you can use one of those codes. Just remember, they're single use only, so cross them off as you use them and never leave them lying around. Now let's test our setup. Sign out of your Zimbra account and log back in. You'll be presented with a new code entry screen and you know what to do. Get your smartphone out, open Google Authenticator and enter that code. Note the button that says Trust This Computer. You can optionally check that off, but only do so on a computer that only you have access to. That makes it so that on this computer, you can log in without two-factor authentication in the future. This adds convenience for your office computer or a computer that you always use, but just remember, I probably wouldn't do this on a laptop or other easily stolen device. Though if that happens, you could always revoke this later by logging into your account and visiting the Preferences Accounts section again. Microsoft Outlook users, now it's time to reopen Outlook. Since the Zimbra connector must make changes to your configuration, Outlook may close almost immediately, but open it up once again and now you'll be prompted for that two-factor authentication code. And there you have it. We learned what two-factor authentication is, why it's really not as intimidating as it sounds, and how to configure and use it on our Zimbra account. From all of us here at Positive eSolutions, thanks for watching and stay safe.